These days in the field of neuroimaging, you need to become familiar with something called Python. Many of the latest techniques, such as hyperalignment, are most easily done with Python. And many software packages like NiBabel, NiLearn, NL Tools require Python as well. Since most of the leading software developers in the field use Python, if you want to stay up with the latest trends in the field, you should learn it as well. So what is Python? Python is a programming language that's been around for over 30 years, and in the beginning, it was run from the terminal. Later on, the developers created something called Integrated Development Environments, or IDEs. These were more customized interfaces that allowed you to do things such as open multiple files at the same time, highlight code, and set breakpoints for debugging. Eventually, they created a more advanced interface called a Jupyter Notebook. The main advantages of a Jupyter Notebook is its readability, portability, and straightforward editing interface. They can also be used as a web-based application, meaning you can easily embed images and videos into your notebook, as well as download data. This is particularly important for accessing databases and repositories such as openneural.org. My recommendation is to use Jupyter Notebooks to learn Python and to use the notebooks themselves within something called Neurodesk. The links for how to download and install Neurodesk can be found down below. Since Neurodesk contains many different imaging software suites, you can easily use them with the Jupyter Notebooks for analyzing neuroimaging data. Neurodesk also takes care of different version issues, so it should make the whole programming experience much smoother. Once you have downloaded and installed Neurodesk, use the launcher to select a new notebook. This will open a blank Jupyter notebook, which looks like this. The panel on the left is the navigation panel, which shows the current directory and any files within that directory. The panel on the right which takes up the most space, is the editing pane. Here you can write and execute code by clicking in a gray box, also called a cell, and typing something such as x equals three. To run the code, you could either click run selected cell or simply hold down shift and press enter. What we've done is assigned a variable, one of the basics of computer programming. In this case, we have assigned a value of three to the variable x. Notice that once you have run the code, it automatically creates a new blank cell immediately below the one you have just run. In our case, there wasn't any output from the cell we ran. If we wanted to see what value was contained in x, we would just type x in the new cell and then run it. Notice that after we run this cell, the number three is returned outside of the cells. This is output that cannot be directly manipulated, although it can be overwritten by editing the previous cells and rerunning them. If you end up with a notebook that has many cells and you want to run all of them in one go, you can go to run, run all cells. The brackets next to each cell, which are assigned an index number once they are run, will change to an asterisk when they are running. Usually too fast to see if you are doing something simple, like assigning a variable but which can be present for quite a while if you are doing something more computationally intensive. To get more experience with Python and Jupyter Notebooks, I recommend a textbook by Talia Coney and Ariel Rokem called Neuroimaging and Data Science, which is also available as an online ebook. This is an excellent introduction to Python for neuroimagers, as many of the examples are specific to neuroimaging and fMRI analysis. Let's begin with chapter five of their book titled, A Brief Introduction to Python. This is an example of a Jupyter notebook that has been converted to a web page. The web page itself is static, but you can download the text as a Jupyter notebook and edit it on your own computer. In order to do that, scroll back to the very top and then click on this download button here and select .ipynb. For this tutorial, we will place that downloaded notebook in the folder Neuro Desktop Storage, which is in our home directory. 
You can move it by opening a terminal and typing MV followed by the Python notebook name. And then for the directory, select home directory, neuro desktop storage. Once the notebook is in that folder, you can open it by loading the NeuroDesk app and navigating to the Neuro Desktop Storage folder in which you should see the new Jupyter Notebook. Double click on it to open the notebook, which will now be displayed in your Neuro Desk window. You can now work with the notebook interactively by clicking within a cell and pressing Shift and Enter. This will kick you to the next block of text, whether it is code or not. You can keep pressing shift and enter to go through each block consecutively. Notice that if we don't make any changes to the code, it will simply replace the output with what was there before. This can help you evaluate the difference between what the output should be with the default code compared to what changes when you make edits. And of course, you can simply run everything in one go by clicking run, run all cells. Now that you know the basics about Jupyter Notebooks, we can use them to learn more about Python. Many of the concepts underlying Python are identical to something like Unix, and you can learn more about that programming language using the links down below. We will use the Yarkoni and Rokum textbook to learn more in the next video about how to implement these concepts in Python.